One morning, my father and I went up on a jeep ride in the mountains of Idaho to see if we could find any interesting insects. Now, even though it is a mild desert here, there is still plenty of life. First, the roads were pretty bare other than a couple grasshoppers, but as the sun started to warm things up, we started seeing large black insects running and hopping around on the roads. So this that I have right here is a Mormon cricket, and let's just talk a little bit first about their name. So they are technically not even crickets, but a type of large katydid. They're called Mormon crickets because when Mormon pioneers traveled out west here, and settled out here, they came and had some severe problems with these insects eating their crops. Now, these insects, I'm going to pick it up now. Um, it makes me really nervous holding it uh, because it's just very heavy and uh, I don't think it's going to hurt me, but it does have jaws that it chews through plants and things. But I don't want to get bitten, especially after my toe biter experience, so I'm trying to be a little bit more careful now, but they can weigh up to about three grams, which is about the weight of a penny. So it doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's a large insect, as you can see that I'm holding it. So when the conditions get right, these insects, um, they can appear in staggering numbers. And so researchers are still not quite sure why large groups of these insects appear some years and then other years they do not. but. When they swarm, they'll feed on a wide variety of plants and they can decimate all sorts of crops just because of their severe numbers, but they really prefer feeding on um, developing fruits and flowers and seeds, and so that's why they cause the most damage is because those are the things they like to eat. They'll also eat roadkill, which is kind of interesting. Uh, speaking of that as well, they also are cannibalistic. They will eat other Mormon crickets when they're available. And really the reason for that is because they need extra protein. They're not able to get that protein in the environment, so eating one another will help them get the protein they need because in this type of environment, there's not a ton of sources of protein. So recently I got to talk with the professor, Dr. Sword at Texas A&M University, and he worked with Mormon crickets before. And in his research, I'll put that up on the screen now, he put radio trackers on the crickets to see how far they could move each day and one of the crickets moved just under two kilometers or about 1.25 miles in just one day so each day if these things can move like a mile it's crazy how far these things can move and these are some of the fastest moving um, insects at least land wise obviously so when these crickets get in large numbers they can cover up roads and the roads will get so slick from so many dead bodies of the crickets and it's just this ongoing cycle so crickets get on the road and then other crickets come to cannibalize them and then they just keep building in numbers until the roads are just super slick and so it almost makes it like you're driving on ice that's one problem that these crickets can cause so i want to talk a little bit about the gender so the one that i have here this is a female and I know that this looks like it's some sort of stinger or something, but this is actually an ovipositor. The females use this to inject eggs into the ground and keep them hidden from predators. This cricket here that I just found is a male, and I know this because it doesn't have that long ovipositor. And the males, I've noticed being with them, they're much noisier. And when I try to pick them up, they almost always make a noise. It kind of startles me a little bit, but what they're trying to do it for is to try and call in some females. They're chirping, saying, hey, I'm here. With Mormon crickets, the role that each sex plays is actually quite interesting because it can change depending on the situation. So in some situations, the males will fight each other to get access to the females. And I suspect that's what's happening today because I keep hearing a lot of the crickets and they're making lots of noise and there's not too many of them here. In other situations, the females will actually be the ones that are fighting each other to try and get access to the males. So depending on how many crickets there are present and how many resources, that will change kind of, you know, who's in charge of the relationship and who gets to pick a mate, which is really cool. Either way, the males will offer a nuptial gift for the female called a 
spermatophylax, which the female will eat. So that's a great gift they're giving them. Here's a picture of one. And really it's just this mass of uh, protein that they produce, the males, and the females will eat it and it gives them nutrients so that they can lay more eggs and be more successful. So right now there's not a ton of crickets out here, but if the numbers ever do get high in this area or somewhere nearby, what they will use is baits. And so these baits are poisoned and the crickets will eat them. And since the crickets still have some of the bait in them, as another cricket cannibalizes them, it will kill them. So um, with insects, especially these, you know, it's really important to understand that life cycle so we can take advantage of their life cycle to help us with controlling them. So as for these crickets right now, like as you're seeing, they're not too high in the numbers right now, but I will come back in a few weeks just to see if there's any more or if anything changes. If there is a change, I will make another video and show that off to you guys. But thanks for watching this episode. If you would like to leave a comment below, please do so. As I see other insects, I'll be making more videos. So make sure and like and subscribe to stay tuned next time for all things insects.